The city was alive with the hum of morning traffic, the constant buzz of hurried footsteps, and the distant echo of car horns. People moved like a river, flowing through the streets, each individual with their own destination in mind. The towering skyscrapers cast long shadows, creating a stark contrast between the sunlit buildings and the dim, cluttered alleyways that ran between them. In the midst of this urban symphony stood Jamal and Keisha, a couple who commanded attention whenever they entered a room. Jamal was tall, with a broad chest and a smile that could disarm even the most hardened negotiator. His suit, perfectly tailored, spoke of success and sophistication. Keisha, elegant and poised, had an air of grace about her that turned heads wherever she went. Her eyes, sharp and observant, missed nothing, and her presence was both commanding and comforting. They had it all, or so it seemed. A thriving business empire, luxurious cars, a sprawling home in the city's most affluent neighborhood, and a reputation for philanthropy. But beneath the surface, there was a restlessness, a feeling that their wealth and status had distanced them from the realities that once shaped them. Jamal leaned against the gleaming black sedan parked at the curb, his gaze fixed on the people passing by. You see them, Keisha, he said, his voice low but intense. How they walk by without even a glance, it's like the homeless are invisible. Keisha nodded, her expression thoughtful. It's easy to forget, Jamal. People are so focused on their own lives, their own problems. But it wasn't that long ago that we were struggling too. We know what it's like to be ignored, to feel invisible. Jamal's eyes flickered with memories of their past, of the days when they had to scrape by, counting every dollar, worrying about the next meal. We've come a long way, but sometimes I wonder if we've lost touch with what really matters. Writing checks isn't enough. I want to understand what it's really like out here. Keisha turned to face him fully, her brow furrowing in concern. Are you serious about this? Disguising ourselves as homeless? It's not just about putting on old clothes. It's dangerous, Jamal. I know, he said, his tone firm. But we need to do this, Keisha. How can we help if we don't even understand what they're going through? We need to feel it, live it, even if it's just for a short time. Keisha sighed, the weight of his words sinking in. She had always admired Jamal's determination, his willingness to go above and beyond. And deep down, she felt the same way. If we're going to do this, we have to do it right. We can't just walk out there without a plan. Jamal smiled, knowing she was with him. I wouldn't have it any other way. We'll spend a week out there, living like them, no money, no phones, just us in the streets. The decision made, they began to prepare meticulously. They visited thrift stores in neighborhoods far from their own, purchasing old, tattered clothes that no one would recognize them in. Jamal grew out his beard, letting it become scruffy, while Keisha stopped her regular salon visits, allowing her hair to grow wild and unruly. They even rehearsed their backstories perfecting the details that would make them just another pair of faces lost in the sea of the homeless. Their plan was to start in a part of the city where they were least likely to be recognized, a place far removed from their usual haunts. It was a part of the city known for its roughness, where the homeless population was highest, and where the divide between wealth and poverty was most glaring. The night before they were to begin, they sat together in their lavish living room, the contrast between their surroundings and what they were about to face almost surreal. Are we really ready for this? Keisha asked, her voice barely above a whisper. Jamal reached out and took her hand, squeezing it gently. We're as ready as we'll ever be. This isn't just about us. It's about understanding, about making a real difference, and we'll do it together. Keisha nodded, her resolve strengthening. Together. As they prepared to step into a world that was both familiar and foreign, they knew that this experience would change them in ways they couldn't yet imagine. They were about to trade comfort for hardship, security for vulnerability, all in the pursuit of truth. And in doing so, they hoped to find not only answers, but also a renewed sense of purpose. The sun was just beginning to rise as Jamal and Keisha stepped out of their home, now entirely unrecognizable in their new disguises. The pristine suits and designer dresses were replaced by layers of mismatched threadbare clothing. Jamal's once polished shoes had been swapped for a pair of worn-out sneakers with holes at the toes, 
and Keisha's stylish handbag was now an old canvas tote, frayed at the edges. Their transformation was complete. They looked like they belonged on the streets, not in the boardrooms where they usually commanded respect. They walked a few blocks to a bus stop where they knew they wouldn't be recognized, then boarded a city bus that would take them to a neighborhood on the other side of town. As they sat down, heads low to avoid eye contact, Jamal felt the weight of their decision settle over him. The bus was mostly empty, save for a few other passengers who seemed equally down on their luck. A woman, bundled in layers of coats despite the warm weather, glanced at them briefly before turning her gaze back out the window. Keisha leaned closer to Jamal, her voice barely above a whisper. I feel so out of place, but I guess that's the point, isn't it? Jamal nodded, his eyes scanning the cityscape as it passed by. We need to let go of who we are and just focus on this moment. We're not Jamal and Keisha anymore. We're just another homeless couple trying to get by. The bus ride was long, taking them through areas of the city they rarely visited, run-down neighborhoods with boarded-up shops and graffiti-covered walls. When they finally arrived at their destination, they stepped off the bus and into a world that was both alien and painfully familiar. The streets here were lined with makeshift tents, the inhabitants huddled in small groups, trying to stay out of sight and out of trouble. Jamal and Keisha walked cautiously, unsure of where to go or what to do next. They had planned to find a spot where they could sit and observe, but now that they were here, the reality of the situation was overwhelming. The smells, the sounds, the looks of despair on the faces of those around them, it was all too real. They found a spot near a dilapidated building where they could sit with their backs against the wall and blend into the surroundings. The morning rush had started, and people were beginning to fill the streets. Most walked past without a second glance, just as Jamal had predicted. A few stared, their gazes filled with a mixture of pity and contempt, but no one stopped to offer help. Hours passed, and the day grew hotter. Keisha could feel the sun beating down on her through the gaps in the buildings. The city seemed to be moving at a pace they couldn't match, and with every passing minute, she felt more and more invisible. Jamal sat beside her, silent and still, his mind racing with thoughts he couldn't yet articulate. As the afternoon approached, hunger gnawed at them both. They hadn't eaten since the night before, and their stomachs were empty, save for the nerves that churned within them. Jamal had suggested they fast to make the experience more authentic, but now, in the heat and with the fatigue setting in, it felt like a mistake. We need to find something to eat. Keisha said, her voice cracking from the dryness in her throat. But how? We don't have any money. Jamal looked around, his eyes landing on a small grocery store across the street. Maybe we can ask for something. Tell them we're hungry. I've heard some places will give you food if you're desperate enough. Keisha hesitated. She had never asked for help before, not like this. The thought of begging for food filled her with shame but she knew it was part of the experience. She nodded, and together they crossed the street, trying to blend in with the crowd. The store was small, with shelves packed tight with canned goods and basic groceries. The clerk, a middle-aged man with a gruff demeanor, barely glanced at them as they entered. Jamal approached the counter, his voice shaky as he spoke. Excuse me, sir. We don't have any money, but we're really hungry. Is there any way you could spare some food? The clerk looked up from his newspaper, his eyes narrowing as he took in their appearance. For a moment he said nothing, the silence stretching uncomfortably. Then with a dismissive wave he pointed to a basket near the door. Take whatever you want from there. It's stuff that's about to go bad anyway. Jamal and Keisha thanked him, relief washing over them as they made their way to the basket. Inside they found a few bruised apples, a loaf of bread that was starting to mold, and a couple of cans of soup with dents in them. It wasn't much, but it was enough to get them through the day. As they left the store, Keisha couldn't help but notice the way people stared at them, the judgment in their eyes. It was as if they had become a different species, something less than human. The experience was humbling and humiliating all at once. Back at their spot, they ate in silence, the food barely satisfying their hunger but enough to keep them going. 
The day dragged on, and as the sun began to set, the streets emptied out, leaving only those like them behind. Keisha leaned her head against Jamal's shoulder, exhaustion overtaking her. This is just the first day, Jamal. How are we going to make it through the rest of the week? Jamal wrapped his arm around her, pulling her close. One day at a time, Keisha. We'll take it one day at a time. As night fell, the city around them seemed to grow colder, more hostile. The streetlights flickered on, casting long shadows over the broken pavement. Jamal and Keisha huddled together, trying to keep warm, their bodies pressed against the rough concrete wall. They had never felt so alone, so exposed. But they knew that this was just the beginning of their journey. A journey that would test not only their endurance, but also their understanding of the world around them. And as they drifted off to sleep, with the sounds of the city lulling them into a restless slumber, they couldn't help but wonder what the next day would bring. The first rays of dawn crept over the city, casting a dim light on the sleeping forms huddled in doorways and under overpasses. Jamal and Keisha stirred from their uncomfortable slumber, their bodies stiff and aching from the cold concrete. The second day of their journey had begun, and already the reality of their situation was wearing on them. Jamal stretched, wincing as he tried to loosen his muscles. The night had been long and restless, filled with the sounds of the city, a distant siren, the occasional shout, and the constant hum of traffic. He glanced at Keisha, who was still curled up beside him, her face drawn with exhaustion. Morning, he said softly, reaching out to touch her shoulder. Keisha groaned in response, slowly sitting up and rubbing her eyes. Morning, she replied, her voice thick with fatigue. She looked around, taking in the sight of the empty street, littered with the remnants of the night before. I don't know how people do this every day. I feel like I haven't slept at all. Jamal nodded, his expression grim. I know, but we have to keep going. We need to see this through. They stood, gathering their meager belongings and preparing for another day on the streets. Hunger gnawed at them both, but they had no money and no idea where their next meal would come from. They knew they would have to rely on the kindness of strangers, but after their experience the day before, they weren't sure how much kindness they could expect. As they walked through the city, they noticed how different everything seemed now that they were on the other side. The world they had once navigated with ease, the world of business meetings, fine dining, and luxury felt like a distant memory. Now, they were invisible, just two more faces in the crowd. Ignored by the same people they had once shared boardrooms and social events with. Their first encounter of the day came when they passed a small park where a few other homeless people had gathered. An older man, with a long gray beard and tattered clothes, was handing out cups of coffee and rolls from a large bag. He noticed Jamal and Keisha hesitating at the edge of the park and waved them over. Hey, you two look like you could use something warm, the man called out, his voice friendly despite the roughness in his tone. Jamal and Keisha exchanged a glance before walking over. The man handed them each a cup of coffee and a roll, smiling warmly. Name's Frank. You new around here? Jamal nodded, accepting the coffee gratefully. Yeah. Just trying to get by, like everyone else. Frank chuckled, his eyes crinkling at the corners. Ain't that the truth? This here's the best place to get some breakfast in the morning. Sometimes, the shelter down the street has soup too, if you're lucky. Keisha smiled at him, thankful for the kindness. Thank you, Frank. This means a lot. Frank waved off her thanks. No need to thank me. We all gotta look out for each other out here. Ain't nobody else gonna do it. They sat with Frank for a while, listening to him talk about life on the streets. He had been homeless for years, he told them, ever since he lost his job and couldn't keep up with the rent. He spoke of the dangers they needed to watch out for, other homeless people who might not be so friendly, the police who sometimes cleared out the parks, and the cold nights that could be deadly if you weren't prepared. As the morning wore on, more people joined them, forming a small community around Frank's generosity. Jamal and Keisha listened to their stories, each one a reminder of how quickly life could change, how easily someone could fall through the cracks. There was Susan, a young woman not much older than Keisha, who had run away from an abusive home and ended up on the streets. There was Robert, 
a former construction worker who had been injured on the job and couldn't work anymore, his savings quickly depleted by medical bills. The stories were all different, but the common thread was the same. Life had dealt them a bad hand, and now they were just trying to survive. Jamal and Keisha shared their own story, careful to stick to the backstory they had created. They talked about losing their jobs, about being evicted from their apartment when they couldn't pay the rent. The others listened with sympathy, nodding and understanding. They were accepted into the group, their differences unnoticed or unimportant. By midday, the group began to disperse, each person heading off in search of food, shelter, or a safe place to rest. Frank bid them goodbye, reminding them to come back to the park the next morning if they needed breakfast again. As Jamal and Keisha walked away, their spirits were buoyed by the kindness they had encountered, but the reality of their situation remained. They still had no idea where they would sleep that night, and the thought of another night on the streets filled them with dread. They spent the afternoon wandering the city, trying to find a safe place to rest. They passed by countless people, businessmen in suits, mothers with children, tourists snapping pictures, but no one paid them any attention. The city that had once been their playground was now a hostile environment, full of challenges they had never considered. Eventually, they found themselves in a quiet alleyway, far from the busy streets. It wasn't much, but it offered some shelter from the wind and a bit of privacy. They sat down, leaning against the cold brick wall, and tried to relax. As the sun began to set, the temperature dropped, and they huddled together for warmth. Keisha shivered, her thin clothes no match for the chill in the air. I don't know how much longer I can do this, Jamal. It's harder than I thought. Jamal pulled her closer, trying to share his body heat. I know, Keisha, but we're in this together. We'll get through it. The night was long and restless, filled with the sounds of the city and the constant fear of being discovered. They dozed fitfully, waking at every noise, every distant shout. The cold seeped into their bones, and by morning, they were both exhausted, their bodies aching from the hard ground. But despite the hardships, something had shifted in both of them. They had seen the world through new eyes, and they couldn't ignore the reality they had experienced. The people they had met, the stories they had heard, they were all real, and they had made an impact. As the first light of dawn crept over the city, Jamal and Keisha knew that they were no longer the same people who had started this journey. They had been changed by the experience, and they were determined to use that change to make a difference. As the days passed, Jamal and Keisha fell into the rhythm of their new lives on the streets. They became familiar faces among the homeless community in the area, learning where to find food, which shelters were the safest, and how to navigate the unspoken rules of life on the margins. Despite the hardships, they found themselves growing closer, relying on each other in ways they hadn't since the early days of their relationship. Yet, with each passing day, the weight of their experience grew heavier, pushing them closer to the moment when they would have to confront the full reality of their situation. It was on the fifth day that everything changed. The day had started like any other, with Jamal and Keisha making their way to the park to see if Frank had managed to scrounge up some breakfast. The weather had taken a turn for the worse and a cold drizzle had begun to fall, making the already difficult conditions even more miserable. They found Frank sitting on a bench, his usually cheerful demeanor subdued by the gray sky and the damp air. Morning, Frank, Jamal greeted him, sitting down beside him. Rough day, huh? Frank nodded, his expression somber. Yeah, it's days like this that are the hardest. Not much food to go around and everyone's just trying to stay dry. I managed to get a few rolls, but it ain't much. Keisha took a seat next to Jamal pulling her jacket tighter around her to keep out the cold. Anything we can do to help? Frank shook his head. Just stick together and watch each other's backs. It's going to be a tough one. They spent the morning huddled together, sharing the few rolls Frank had managed to find and trying to stay warm. The park, usually bustling with activity, was almost deserted, the rain driving most people away. Those who remained looked as miserable as Jamal and Keisha felt their spirits dampened by the relentless drizzle. 
As the afternoon wore on, the rain showed no sign of letting up, and the temperature continued to drop. Jamal and Keisha decided to head to a nearby shelter, hoping to find a place to stay for the night. They had heard mixed things about the shelter. Some said it was safe and welcoming, others warned that it was overcrowded and dangerous, but with the weather worsening, they had little choice. The shelter was a long walk away, and by the time they arrived, they were both soaked through and shivering. The building was old and run down with peeling paint and broken windows, but it offered the promise of warmth and a dry place to sleep. Inside, the air was thick with the smell of unwashed bodies and damp clothes. The room was crowded with people huddled together on thin mats, trying to find some semblance of comfort. Jamal and Keisha made their way to the front desk, where a tired-looking woman was checking people in. Two for the night, Jamal said, his voice barely audible over the noise of the crowded room. The woman glanced at them, her eyes narrowing as she took in their bedraggled appearance. We're full up, she said flatly. You'll have to find somewhere else. Please, Keisha pleaded, desperation creeping into her voice. It's pouring out there and we don't have anywhere else to go. The woman hesitated, her expression softening for a moment. She glanced around the room, then back at Jamal and Keisha. All right, you can stay, but you'll have to share a mat. We don't have any extras. Thank you, Jamal said, relief flooding through him. We really appreciate it. She handed them a key to a small storage room in the back, explaining that it was the only space left available. It wasn't much, but it was dry, and it offered some privacy. Jamal and Keisha hurried to the room, grateful for the small bit of shelter it provided. They settled in as best they could, laying their wet clothes out to dry and huddling together on the thin mat. The room was cold, but at least they were out of the rain, and they tried to focus on the small comfort that provided. As night fell, the shelter grew quieter, the exhaustion of the day overtaking the occupants. Jamal and Keisha lay side by side, their bodies pressed close together for warmth. But just as they were beginning to drift off to sleep, the door to the storage room burst open, and three men stormed in. Jamal jumped to his feet, instinctively placing himself between Keisha and the intruders. The men were rough-looking, with wild eyes and slurred speech that suggested they were under the influence of something. One of them, a tall, burly man with a scar running down the side of his face, stepped forward. This is our spot, the man growled his voice low and menacing. You two need to get out. Jamal stood his ground, his heart pounding in his chest. We were given this room by the staff. We're just trying to get through the night, same as you. The man sneered, his hand reaching into his coat. I said, get out. Jamal felt a surge of fear as he saw the glint of metal, a knife. Keisha gasped, her hand flying to her mouth as she saw the weapon. Please, Keisha begged, her voice trembling. We don't want any trouble. We'll leave. Jamal hesitated, torn between protecting Keisha and standing up to the men. But he knew they were outnumbered and outmatched. He slowly backed away, pulling Keisha with him. Smart choice, the man with the knife sneered, watching them closely as they moved toward the door. But just as they were about to leave, the man lunged forward, grabbing Keisha's arm and pulling her back into the room. Jamal reacted instinctively, throwing himself at the man and knocking him to the ground. The room erupted into chaos as the other two men jumped in, fists flying. Jamal fought with everything he had, adrenaline coursing through his veins as he struggled to protect Keisha. But the men were stronger, and soon they had him pinned to the ground. Keisha screamed, trying to pull the men off him, but they shoved her aside. Just as the situation seemed hopeless, the door burst open again, and Frank, along with a few other shelter residents, rushed in. They had heard the commotion and come to help. Together, they managed to overpower the attackers, dragging them out of the room and throwing them out of the shelter. Jamal lay on the floor, panting and bruised, his body trembling from the fight. Keisha rushed to his side, tears streaming down her face. Jamal, are you okay? She cried, her voice choked with fear. I'm fine, he gasped, trying to catch his breath. I'm fine. Frank knelt beside them, his face lined with concern. You're lucky we heard you. Those guys have been causing trouble around here for a while. But you'll be safe now. We'll make sure of it. Keisha nodded, her heart still racing. 
Thank you, Frank. We didn't know what we were going to do. Frank helped Jamal to his feet, his grip firm and steady. You two should stay close to the main room. It's safer there. I'll keep an eye out for you. They followed Frank back to the main room, where they found a small space to rest among the other shelter residents. The adrenaline slowly wore off, leaving them both exhausted and shaken by the ordeal. But as they lay down together, surrounded by the warmth and presence of others, they realized just how close they had come to losing everything. This experience had been more than they had ever anticipated. They had seen the dark side of life on the streets, the violence and desperation that came with it. But they had also seen the strength of community, the way people came together to protect each other when it mattered most. As Jamal and Keisha drifted off to sleep, they knew that their journey was far from over. They had faced the climax of their struggle, but the lessons they had learned would stay with them forever. And as they held each other close, they vowed to use those lessons to make a difference in the world, no matter what it took. The morning after the attack, Jamal and Keisha woke to the sound of chatter and the smell of something warm cooking. The shelter was coming to life, with people moving about, preparing for another day of survival. The events of the previous night weighed heavily on them, but they were determined to see their journey through to the end. Jamal's body ached from the fight, and Keisha's nerves were still frayed, but they found comfort in the familiar faces around them. Frank was already up, stirring a large pot of oatmeal, and he waved them over when he saw them. Morning, you two, he greeted them with a weary smile. Glad to see you're still with us. Jamal managed a small smile in return. Thanks to you, Frank. We owe you one. Frank shook his head. Ain't nothing. We all look out for each other here. That's how we survive. They joined Frank and the others for breakfast, the warmth of the food helping to soothe their frayed nerves. As they ate, they listened to the conversations around them, stories of hardship, of hope, and of the small victories that kept everyone going. It was a stark contrast to the world they had left behind, but in many ways it felt more real, more honest. After breakfast, Jamal and Keisha decided to take a walk, needing some time to process everything that had happened. The rain had finally stopped, leaving the streets wet and glistening in the early morning light. As they walked, they talked about their experience, about the people they had met, and about what they had learned. We've seen so much in just a few days, Keisha said, her voice tinged with disbelief. I can't believe how different life is out here. It's like we've been living in a completely different world. Jamal nodded, his expression thoughtful. It's eye-opening, that's for sure. We've always known that homelessness was a problem, but now we've lived it. We felt the fear, the desperation, the hopelessness. It's something you can't really understand until you've been through it yourself. Keisha looked at him, her eyes filled with determination. We have to do something, Jamal. We can't just go back to our old lives and pretend this never happened. Jamal agreed. We will, but we need to figure out the best way to help. It's not just about money. It's about understanding what people really need. We've seen how important community is, how much it matters to have someone watching your back. Maybe we can build on that. As they continued walking, they began to formulate a plan. They would use their resources to create a foundation dedicated to helping the homeless, not just by providing food and shelter, but by fostering a sense of community and empowerment. They would offer job training, mental health services, and support networks to help people get back on their feet. And most importantly, they would approach the issue with the empathy and understanding they had gained through their own experience. By the time they returned to the shelter, they had a clear vision of what they wanted to accomplish. They spent the rest of the day talking to the people they had met, asking them about their needs, their struggles, and their hopes for the future. The conversations were raw and honest, and they provided invaluable insights that would shape the Foundation's mission. As the sun began to set, Jamal and Keisha knew it was time to return to their old lives. They had spent nearly a week on the streets, and while they had learned more than they ever could have imagined, they also knew that they had the power to do so much more from their position of privilege. That evening, they gathered their belongings and said their goodbyes. 
Frank and the others wished them well, unaware of the couple's true identities or the impact they would soon have on their lives. As they walked away from the shelter for the last time, Jamal and Keisha felt a mixture of relief and sadness. They were leaving behind a world of struggle, but they were also taking with them a renewed sense of purpose. They knew that their experience had changed them, and they were determined to use that change to make a real difference. A few weeks later, Jamal and Keisha stood before a crowd of reporters and cameras, ready to reveal the truth about their experience. The press conference was held at their newly established Foundation's headquarters, a bright and welcoming space designed to serve as a beacon of hope for the homeless community. As they stepped up to the podium, the room fell silent, everyone eager to hear their story. Jamal took a deep breath and began. Good morning, everyone. Thank you for being here today. My wife and I have always believed in giving back to the community, but recently we realized that we needed to do more. We needed to understand the struggles of those less fortunate, not just from a distance, but up close and personal. He glanced at Keisha, who nodded for him to continue. A little over a month ago, we made the decision to disguise ourselves as homeless and live on the streets for a week. It was one of the hardest things we've ever done, but it was also one of the most enlightening experiences of our lives. We saw firsthand the challenges that so many people face every day, challenges that go beyond just needing food and shelter. We saw the importance of community, of having someone to rely on, and we realized that this is where the real change needs to happen. Keisha stepped forward, her voice strong and steady. We are proud to announce the launch of the Together We Rise Foundation, dedicated to supporting the homeless community in ways that go beyond the basics. Our mission is to empower people, to help them rebuild their lives through job training, mental health support, and most importantly, through creating a sense of community. We believe that everyone deserves a second chance, and we're committed to making that a reality. The room erupted in applause, the reporters already buzzing with questions. But before taking any, Jamal and Keisha invited Frank and a few others from the shelter to join them on stage. They introduced them as the first beneficiaries of the foundation, sharing their stories with the world and highlighting the importance of the work they were about to do. Over the next few months, the foundation quickly became a beacon of hope in the city. Jamal and Keisha worked tirelessly, using their connections and resources to bring attention to the issue of homelessness and to gather support for their cause. They hosted fundraisers, partnered with local businesses, and lobbied for policy changes that would provide long-term solutions for the homeless population. The impact was immediate. The shelter they had stayed in received much-needed renovations and additional funding. More importantly, the people they had met during their week on the streets began to see real changes in their lives. Susan, the young woman who had run away from home, was now in a stable job and living in her own apartment. Robert, the injured construction worker, was receiving physical therapy and job retraining. And Frank, who had been on the streets for years, was now one of the Foundation's most trusted advisors, using his experience to help others find their way. Jamal and Keisha's journey had come full circle. They had set out to understand the struggles of the homeless, and in doing so, they had found a new purpose, one that would leave a lasting legacy for years to come. As they stood together at the Foundation's one-year anniversary celebration, surrounded by the people whose lives they had helped change, Jamal and Keisha knew that they had made the right choice. They had faced the darkest parts of humanity and come out stronger, more determined than ever to fight for those who had been forgotten. The night ended with a speech from Frank who summed up the journey better than anyone else could. Life is hard, he said, his voice carrying across the room. But when we come together, when we look out for each other, we can do more than just survive. We can thrive. And that's what this foundation is all about, giving people the chance to thrive, no matter where they come from or what they've been through. The crowd erupted into cheers and applause, the sense of hope and unity palpable in the air. Jamal and Keisha smiled at each other, their hearts full as they looked out at the people who had become their new family. They had set out to make a difference, 
and they had succeeded beyond their wildest dreams. Together, they had risen above the challenges, and they were ready to keep rising, lifting others up with them every step of the way.